Hi, I'm Nakia Smithers, Essence Magazine best-selling author, X Magazine Publisher of the Year, and the president of the award-winning Readers with Attitudes Book Club. Today I'd like to share with you a few excerpts from my books Gold Digging, Key Story, Attitudes of a Woman, and Sweet Dreams. First I'd like to start with Gold Digging. Gold Digging tells a tragic tale of a young man by the name of Keith and a love interest, Goldie. They become intertwined and they discover that love is truly the gold worth digging for. At the moment, Sonny was in Goldie's office annoying her with his presence. He stepped closer to her and she could have sworn that she smelled the distinct odor of Hennessy. I thought it wasn't ethical to drink on the job, Goldie questioned, rolling her eyes and letting out a heavy sigh to let him know that she was busy and he was swinging on her last reserve nerve. That rule applies to everyone but the boss. His stance slightly resembled a professional hobo while leaning to the side. His eyes became watery and beady. I always liked you, Goldie. You don't have a choice. Our mother's on the same church board. And I know you like me too, he said, ignoring the words that she spoke. That is not a proven fact. I tolerate you. You used to be cool, but I think since you got the station, you've been power tripping and become this different Sonny that at times I can barely dare with. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate the position that you gave me, but you have become unbearable. Oh, really? Yes. Out of respect of our mothers, I keep the gist of my feelings to myself. But since you asked, but truth be told, I think you are a pompous jerk and I could do a day or two without you being in my presence. You are sexy. His words slurred as he obviously lost comprehension of what she was saying. He bent over her, smelling her sweet smelling perfume. Mm. Sonny, she rose up quickly. Need I remind you of your wife? His wife, Joanne, was a stay-at-home mom who looked over the household and his two children. Joanne was Sonny's height and weight. In fact, they resemble more brother and sister than husband and wife. I bet you are warm and tight, he said with a burst of energy, quickly followed by his hand finding its way under her dress. He erased any invading thoughts of his wife and kids to legitimize his actions. And in one quick motion, he lifted her skirt and felt the warmth under her thighs, close to her vaginal region. Are you crazy? Goldie raised a wide hand and smacked him across the face. The sound vibrated the entire room. For some strange reason, in his sick and twisted mind, the violence and resistance only turned him on. You know you want this. His fly was already open and exposed his swollen manhood. Vomit surged from Goldie's bowels up through her esophagus and straight onto his shirt. The sight of him sickened her heavily. She ran around the desk. He screamed, wiping her vomit off of his shirt with his tie, which was now completely off. Come here! He ran around the desk towards her and they played the round robin around the desk for 20 seconds before he finally grabbed her hair, pulling her on top of the desk. Stop it. Shut up and take this. I'll even pay you. The desperation in his voice and his pleading eyes begged her to give in to his advances. He had her hair in a tight grip and was forcing her head onto the desk. With his other hand, he loosened his pants to once again expose himself and glided his hand up to her pelvis. She spit right into his face. She was kicking and screaming all the while. She felt herself becoming sick again. It was like she was the one with the evening hangover. Her fight was building, but her hair was hurting. She frantically searched her mind to think about something that would loosen the situation and make it more bearable. Only because he had his body on top of her and his weight was leaned against her did he have the upper hand. He screamed as the saliva trickled down his face. He slammed her head forcefully on the desk. Stay still. I'm not about to get raped, she thought. She slowed down the resistance so she could think a little bit clearer. That's it, baby girl. I know you wanted it too. As he loosened his grip on her hair to pull her down her stockings, Goldie quickly took the light stand that was next to the edge of the desk and threw it over his head. It made a strong crashing noise and he collapsed to the floor. She jumped down off the desk and gathered her belongings and ran out of the office. Looking around, the rest of the station was completely office. Silent. 
The studio where the DJ and engineer were was in complete soundproof booth. Therefore, they had no idea of what was going on. She thought about busting into the studio to get some help, but her thought was just to get out of the station. Therefore, she headed straight to the elevator. As the doors opened on the first floor, she was greeted by the rain. It wasn't raining earlier, but at the moment, the rain was coming down in a thick downpour. She wondered where the security guard was that was supposed to be at the front of the building. He could have been in the bathroom, which wasn't helping the lonely woman who was longing for attention at the moment. Where was her Prince Charming? He was supposed to be waiting in the balances to sweep her away from I'd like to introduce you next to my book called Attitudes of a Woman. Attitudes of a Woman is a poetry compilation that hosts over more than 150 poems. It talks about every emotion that women go through, different attitudes that we exhibit, um, good, bad, or indifferent. So it's really a journey in traveling with me to see where I was at the time. I'm going to start with a piece that's called Communion. It was like a wedding day, except there were no long rows of chairs filled with next to kins, next to kin, next to kin, all tapping their feet, waiting to dig into the soul food buffet they know accompanied their invitation. An exception to the minister, there was no soloist, no ring bearer, no flower girl, no best man, no matron of honor, no broom, no candles, no bouquet, no long white dress. Subtract the veil, tuxedos matching in unison, even the rings. No heels, no stockings, no girdle, hair let down. No makeup, no pearls, no something new, no something old, no something blue. But still, it was like that day will be when it comes, yes. It was like that because the nostalgia, the presence of my own passion engulfed me, took over my feelings, my reservations, no hesitation. I was persuasive yet timid. It was mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the famous of them all? It was the day that I told myself that you are the most beautiful thing and believed it. I took it all in like a haiku. Short, sweet realization, inspiration, charming illustrations, prominence. I drank out a cup that was poured with my own love so that I might relish in it. I'm just in love with me. Is that so wrong? I'm Nakia Smithers, and I hope that you enjoyed. You can visit me on my website, which is www.nakiasmithers.com. My books can be purchased there. Amazon.com, keyword Nakia, or also with Precious Memories Bookstore in Richmond, Virginia. Have a wonderful day and let me know how you like my books. You can visit me on my website, which is NakiaSmithers.com. That's N-I-K-K-E-A. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's <a> water. <laughs> These lights is like. <laughs>